PlayStation 5, we definitely know a lot more about the console than we did just a few weeks ago with Sony giving us footage showing a teardown of the PlayStation 5, revealing aspects of the hardware. And they also showed off the UX, the user experience of PlayStation 5, highlighting new elements of the UI and interesting new features like the cards that appear when you're playing a game and whatnot. Now, with all that information also comes some confirmation when it comes to some of the leaks we have seen in the past. Back then, we weren't sure whether it was real or not, but now we can actually compare some of the stuff that was shown in the leaks to what Sony has officially unveiled and we can now confirm that the leaks actually were real, specifically this one right here. So this is a video uploaded on YouTube, somehow still up on YouTube, that highlights uh, what looks to be a development unit for PS5 and shows the boot screen. And as you can see right here, once the user delves into the menu, it'll look exactly as it does in the PS5 official UX showcase video. So this is what the boot up looks like. I'm assuming this is a cold boot up, meaning not standby, but rather, uh, yeah. Okay, so that's the user selection. Now going back here, you'll find the exact same layout. So welcome back to PlayStation. Welcome back to PlayStation. Who's using this controller? Who's using this controller? You can also see that the user selection, the way it all looks, identical right here, the plus sign, the plus sign on the left. And it looks like if you don't select an image like Scotty Kenzo did here with this avatar icon, you will just see this instead, the square with a smiley face. And then beyond all that, I mean, on the top right, you've got the time on the bottom right, you've got the select prompt, all of that can be seen right here as well. So it's safe to say that this footage is the real deal. This was leaked earlier in the month, back in October 2nd, 2020. And beyond that, the same leaker also leaked the following screenshot showing aspects of the PlayStation 5. If we compare the bottom row of icons here to what's on the official PlayStation user experience video, you'll find that it's exactly the same. So right here is power, right here is the user, this is the controller. Going back to the leaked screenshot, power, user, controller, and then microphone, audio, notifications, microphone, audio. Now these three icons, downloads, music, and your friends, that is not in the development kit version of the PS5 UX, but notifications and everything else as shown right here. Notifications, the game that is currently running, and the home icon are all seen in the leak right here. So suffice to say, this is legit. And what that means is that this aspect of the UX is also real. And when I previously talked about this, I mentioned how it says right here that 664 gigabytes of the 825 gigabytes SSD storage that will come with PS5s is actually available to download games, and in this development kit, only 3.3 gigabytes has been used. So what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that whereas before I couldn't say for sure whether there is any validity to this, now I can say with some semblance of assurance that the amount of available storage on PlayStation 5 will likely be around this. Do keep in mind, however, this is a development kit, so it's entirely possible that the final retail version will differ. But if you look at the Xbox Series X, for example, that has a terabyte of storage that comes built in. 800 gigabytes of that is accessible. 200 gigabytes, almost 200 gigabytes, is taken up by the UX. I surmise it's not going to be too much different with PS5. So a reduction of roughly 150 gigabytes that's reserved for the UX wouldn't come as a surprise to me. Digital Foundry recently analyzed the PlayStation 5 teardown video, and along the way, the host here talked about the SSD storage and how much of that will actually be available, and cited not only the leak, but also a source 
that seemingly provided a more accurate figure based on the information they had then. And so this is what Digital Foundry had to say. A recent leak suggests that the system has 664 gigabytes of space available to the user versus 802 gigs in Xbox Series X. The leak does look compelling, but I can tell you that development kits and test stations, certainly the ones I've seen, uh, have 620 gigabytes of usable space so I'll be interested to see how all of this actually shakes out on final retail hardware. Well, so am I indeed. So we're seeing varying numbers. This leak, which is as good as legit, shows 664 gigabytes. Digital Foundry says they've seen figures of 620 gigabytes, which is even less. So it's around the 600 region, somewhere within that range. Though for both of these sources, the leaker and Digital Foundry, they both were looking at development kits. And already there is variation between what Digital Foundry is reporting versus what the leak is showing. And I surmise that the final retail unit that ships may differ slightly as well. But it does seem likely that low to mid 600s is about the region we can expect for available storage. So yeah, in this era, that's gonna get used up pretty quickly, especially considering the size that AAA games tend to be. But fortunately, there is that SSD expansion bay, which you can see right here in the PS5 teardown video. The guy unscrews the panel where you can insert an NVMe SSD that is whitelisted by PlayStation and Sony. There are gonna be third-party options available, but there are specific SSDs with specific speeds that are compatible with PS5. So you gotta be on the lookout for that. And those are probably not gonna be cheap, especially if you get a two terabyte option, I imagine that's gonna run you quite a bit of money, but there are options. Just know that when you get your PS5 out of the box for the 400 to $500 you end up paying, the console's gonna come with gigabytes in the 600s. And so if you're someone who downloads a lot of games, just be aware of that potential limitation. AAA games in particular, they tend to be, you know, 50 to 100 gigabytes somewhere there in that region. If, if you're Call of Duty, I mean, you might go into the 200 gigabytes, which is a third of PS5's available storage based on the information we have now. You're looking at roughly 12 to 13 50 gigabyte games. You're looking at roughly six uh, 100 gigabyte games or three fully patched Call of Duties. Though with backwards compatible titles with PlayStation 4 games, you can actually sideload those from an external hard drive, an external SSD. And so that will help you save some storage if you're someone who wants to revisit older titles. But keep in mind that PS4 games will also benefit from PS5's SSD, so if you load that from an HDD in particular, you may not get some of the faster loading times that may be inherent to PS4 backwards compatible titles running on the more advanced PS5 hardware. There may be some compromises on that front, but it's still nice to have that option, though when it comes to PS5 titles, games built for next gen, those will not be able to be loaded from an external drive. Those have to be loaded from PS5's internal SSD. And yeah, 664 gigabytes or 620 gigabytes, whatever the final figure ends up being within that 600 range. Assuming that's true, for me at least, it's probably not going to be enough in the long run. And I imagine it's going to be the same for many people. So yeah, we'll see what the prices will be like for expansion. But until then, this is just good knowledge to have so we can set appropriate expectations when it comes to how many games we'll be able to download and run and keep in our library simultaneously right out of the box. So that's everything you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to PlayStation 5's available storage. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the available 620 to 664 gigabytes or whatever the final figure in the retail units might be. Let me know in the comments below whether you're concerned about that storage size or whether it'll be sufficient for you for a while before you have to expand. Drop a comment and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.